coming to you direct from the Glass Case of Emotion Studios, located at Student of the Gun University. Stand by for education, enlightenment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, your host, Professor Paul Markle. You didn't cue the, the applause there, Johnny. All right, well, Johnny, next time you need to cue the applause. All right, and welcome back to Thursday edition of Student of the Gun Radio. I am your host, Paul Markle. And on the other side of the glass case of emotion is Jared, who is this time the studio engineer, the producer of the show, and the man of many parts. And in addition to that, he's also the guy who's been working uh, diligently on the spe- the updated grad 24-7 grad program or all access grad program. SOTG all access. That's yeah, what we'll call it's it. It's going to be SOTG all access. Access? Access. A X I S. Is it access or access? It is access? all access. Yeah, all access. Axes. All access Axis. all the time. <laughs> and in addition to that, we're, we've got the uh, the special Faith in the Patriot promotion coming up here real soon, very ridiculously soon. So uh, pay attention. Pay attention. It's Thursday. So if you're not, yeah, it is Thursday. Uh, if you're not uh, watching your email, or if you haven't gotten an email from us in a while, you're like, oh, I don't get emails from you guys anymore. You know why? Because either A, you never signed up for the broadcast or the newsletter, or B, your nasty email service just started shuffling our stuff over into the spam folder or the promo folder or the whatever folder. Gmail has a nasty habit of doing that. So if you haven't gotten one from us lately and you're like, dude, I signed up for your newsletter and I don't get anything, well, check your email, brother or sister. What you need to do is add... There's two different emails that I use or that we use. Dad uses one and I use one to send out emails. It's info at studentofthegun.com is where some of the emails come from. And then professor at studentofthegunradio.com is the one that Dad uses as well. So add those. Do I do that? Yes. Add those to your uh, favorites or whatever you need to do in your email provider. And that way you make sure that it goes to your inbox and not your promotions or spam folder. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, yeah! All right. Before we get into today's show, we got a uh, a quick update, and I wasn't aware of this yesterday when we did the show, so I have to uh, to give you a quick update on uh, uh, Pope Frank. Uh, Pope Frank is uh, apparently he's down with the whole communist manifesto thing, minus abortion. Uh, I think that's where we're at right now. He do, he doesn't like guns. He doesn't like capitalism. He's all about like spreading the wealth and yada yada. Well. And he came out, you know, this week and said that uh, he doesn't like guns and that people that are gun people or gun manufacturers can't be Christians. And if you invest in a gun company, you can't be a Christian. It's hypocritical. Well, we found a story here that was shared with us from uh, one of one of you on our Facebook, and it says it's from USA Hitman. Now we've never used a story from USAHitman.com yet, so bear with us, but. The story is Vatican Bank is main shareholder in Pietro Beretta Arms. Yes, you guys remember. It sound familiar to you? Sound familiar that, uh, well, you're like, let me see, where's, what country is the Pope in? What country is the Vatican in? You're like, it's in its own country. Okay, what country is Vatican City located within? Well, that would be Italy, right? Who's the number one arms maker in Italy? Well, that would be Beretta. Hmm. It says, uh, the story says, perhaps few people know that Pietro Beretta Arms Factory Limited, the largest arms industry in the world, uh, and is controlled by the holdings SPA Beretta, and the majority shareholder of SPA Beretta uh, is IOR. And you're like, well, who in the world is IOR? And IOR is the Institute for Works of Religion, also known as the Vatican Bank a private institution founded in 1942 by the Pope. You're like the Pope at the time, not the current Pope. But uh, you're like, do what? You're telling me that Pope Pius XII uh, (laughs) founded the Vatican Bank in Vatican City, uh, and that bank is heavily invested in Pietro Beretta? Well, that seems like just a wee bit of hypocrisy to me, but who am I? I'm not a religious scholar, and so I'm obviously not allowed to speak on certain things. I just have to take the Pope at his word. 
We thought you guys would appreciate that. And it's going to be in the show notes. If you want to examine the show notes, it's really super easy. Here's what you do. You go to student of the gun radio, put all those words together, and then you put a dot com behind it. You click on the show, and there's going to be the links to all of the stuff we talk about right there. Yes, yes. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. This is going to be something that uh, that probably saddens you, but not surprises you. This is uh, oh, but before we begin, let's thank Velocity Triggers at velocitytriggers.com. Got a black rifle? They got a trigger for you. Check them out at Velocity Triggers. Brownells at brownells.com. You want to build a gun? You want to alter a gun? You want to strap something onto a gun? You want to stick something into a gun? Whatever you want to do with your gun. Maybe you don't want to do anything with it. Maybe you just want to stick ammo in it. Guess what? They sell that too. Brownells.com. And Frog Lube. It just works. You know where you can get Frog Lube? You can get Frog Lube from Frog Lube or you can get Frog Lube from Brownells.com. It's crazy. It's, you know what Brownells you're, should you're do? You're freaking me out, man. What? They should be like the Build-A-Gun workshop. They should have one of those. It's kind of like a Build-A-Bear, except for Build-A-Gun. Yeah, it's called AR15Builder.com. Well, I meant like in real life. Oh. Like they should have workshops. Just well, you, you know what the problem with that? Here's the problem with that is the ATF doesn't like that. They don't like that when you go somewhere and a gunsmith teaches you, takes a bunch of parts and and you and he teaches you how to build it. They they don't like that. Well, I don't like the ATF. So. Oh well, but, but they don't like you either. So there you go. All right, this is this is a tie-in with a previous story. And before the NRA annual convention and meeting in Nashville, Tennessee, I had no idea what an Uber was. I had no idea. But our friend EJ Owens, like, well, see, Jared last minute changed the breakfast location on EJ, so he had to jump in an Uber. Uh, vehicle and hot footed over to where we were. But thank goodness for the Uber driver who was able to help EJ meet up with us for breakfast. So these two hippies are talking about Uber this and Uber that. And I'm um, like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I, I don't get it at all. But Uber is apparently a competition. Well, tell them what it is, Jared. It's basically a competition for taxi drivers. Uber is an app where you don't you don't have to exchange cash at all. You, you just hook your app up to your credit card, or uh, I guess you could probably do a prepay balance on there. I've never used it before, but you do that, and then you can uh, communicate with the drivers. You post your location, and then they send a driver, and you guys, you, the driver tells you what kind of car you're in. You tell the driver what kind of car like. he's in. Yeah. Now, kind of car you're in. You're not in a car. You're standing by the side of the, the road. The driver tells you what kind of car he's in. Yeah. That's or I mean. she. It could be a she. Whatever. Don't be a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe. Men as in man, you know. As in human? Human, yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyway, so you do that, and then you don't have to exchange cash or anything. You just pay through the app. So that way, uh, yeah, you know how some taxi drivers are kind of shady. Well, and not only that, but people get, you know, people, taxi drivers get robbed. And and they strong they do strong arm robbery. We knew a guy who like the friend of ours tried the taxi driver tried to strong arm rob him and it like, didn't work out well for him. How's that gonna? Yeah. It didn't work out well. So, uh, but anyway, Uber. So I found out who Uber was in Nashville through the follow that conversation that we had, and then then after I found out who Uber was, uh, we had a story. Just very shortly thereafter, by uh, I don't know where it was, but it was it was it was it in Chicago? It was in Chicago because we were dumbfounded that a, a oh, yeah. an Uber driver who was also a licensed concealed carrier stopped a, a nut bar who was running down the street trying to kill people. So Uber driver jumps out, yells "Stop! Stop! Whatever!" shoots crazy nut bar guy, saves a bunch of people. So you're like, well, you know, rock on, good job. Not anymore. Despite the evidence that good guys with guns stop bad guys with guns, uh, Uber has decided to launch a safety first. Pro- and this is the story. It comes to us from the Huffing and Puffington Post. And uh, it says, safety first. Uber cracks down on guns with official ban. Really? Is that how it works now? Oh, sweet boot on a rubber raft. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. But apparently Uber has decided they're going to come out with 
an official company policy prohibiting their Uber drivers. The company announced Friday, and this is a week ago Friday, that drivers and passengers alike are forbidden from carrying firearms while using the popular ride-sharing service. An Uber spokesman told the Wall Street Journal that the policy change actually occurred on June 10th, a full week before a gunman fatally shot nine people in the historic... What does that have to do with anything? <sighs> Oh, my Lord in heaven. Uber, which is expected to make $1 billion in revenue this year, um, is widely considered one of the leading tech companies. da 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 da, da. Um, More about South Carolina. What does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Now, here's the question I have for you, Jared, because you're a hip young cat. Isn't Uber a like a private person-to-person service? Yeah. So Uber drivers... When they pick you up, aren't they using their own car? Yeah. But now Uber's buying cars for people, so. Okay. So it says it's a ride-sharing service. The time of Uber's official ban on firearms is appropriate. The ride-sharing service is just about to be legalized in South Carolina, where regulations are notoriously lenient. Uh, other businesses, blah, blah, blah. So it's just chilly. Oh, see, this is written by the Huffing and Puffington Post by, I'm sure, some left-leaning liberal weenie, uh, Damon Beres uh, of the Huffington Post. And so, they're, see, they don't. this story isn't saying that this is a not a good thing. It's saying it's a great thing. They're really down with this. And they said, you know, they're like, uh, many other businesses have issued restrictions on firearms. Chili's? Chili's? What? That's horse crap. Panera and Target have asked customers to refrain from... They asked them? Jared, did Target ask you to refrain from bringing your gun into their stores? It's called Target for Pete's sake. Yeah. Uh, Has Chili asked you? No? They never have? They never asked you? It says they've asked customers. Uh, I I don't remember being asked or consulted by either Target or Chili's or Panera. Uh, But either way. So, despite evidence to the contrary, this is how hippies and liberals and puke faces work. Despite the fact that we have demonstrable evidence that good people in possession of firearms are there, you know, out on the street. So, who is in the best position to do something good or to make a positive difference? Is it the police officer who's a mile and a half away or the Uber driver or the citizen that's right there when the the felon, the robber, the rapist, the psycho, when they show up. Who's in a position to do something positive? Well, oh, you that's right. We can't be trusted. Yeah, Uber drivers, passengers, people can't be trusted with guns. So uh, how's, all that, uh, how's all that gun-free zone? And this is the, the psychotic, lunatic ravings of the left, the Huffington Post and all their sycophants and, and lunatic readers. Despite being shown over and over and over again that plastic signs and regulations and policies and all this nonsense does nothing to keep human beings safe from evil. Does nothing to keep them safe from evil. But we just need more of it. We need more laws. Okay, whatever. I'm done talking about this. It's it's The stupidity is... is uh. Well, speaking of... Uh, stupidity. It's time to move on to New York. And if we're going to New York, we got to have a special theme song for, well, that whole region. I'd like to teach you all the rules. I get to see them set in stone. I like it when you chain me to the bed. But then you see it's now the show. Yes, that is our slave state news report. And uh, New York State is 100% a slave state. And this story comes to us from the New York Post dot com. Oh, and Jared, tell the folks at home who was kind enough to give us the slave state news report. Oh, the puddle of mud. That's right. With the control. Control is from puddle of mud. Slave state. That's they want to control. you. Yeah, they, they control their citizens. All right. Here we go. Uh, title of the story. Man with machete slashes woman in Bryant Park. And this story is by Larry. Anthony, Antonio, Chad, and Natasha. It took four people to write one story for the New York Post. Wow. 
I mean, rock on. I'm glad everybody's chipping in there over at the New York Post. Let's see if they can get the English language right here. A machete-wielding man slashed a woman in Bryant Park in what police believe was an unprovoked attack on Tuesday. The victim, 31, was near West 42nd Street in the park when a man slashed her in the arm about 11.30 a.m., according to reports. Now, hang on a second. I thought that if you were in public in the daytime... In New York City, where they have lots and lots and lots of, of gun control laws, I mean, let's face it, only bad people and criminals are allowed to have guns in New York. Oh, but apparently bad people can use, you know what, Jared, if they would have passed that anti-machete law, this wouldn't have happened. If we only had more laws. Get a life, bend that knife. Yeah, that's right. Get a life, bend that knife. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? Is that... Uh, that meme or that that story about those just blatant, weak, spineless people in England that's popping back up again. The, that's that same story that we used to uh, reference about six months ago or more on Student of the Gun Radio. I just saw that story pop up on uh, Facebook. Everything on Facebook is, is cyclical, is it not? It is. And right. it's just funny how that works because people see old stories and they're like, oh, this is new. You're like, yeah, you really have to check the yeah, dateline on stuff Yeah, now. you do. Well, the dateline on this one is June 23rd, 2015. So here we go. What do we know? Well, what we know is is that a deranged lunatic who was uh, of color attacked a Korean woman who was not, well, she was of Korean color. But it's called, now, it's called an unprovoked attack. Now, Jared, I'm going to go ahead and be the devil's advocate here. Do you suppose if a Korean man would have attacked a woman of color that we it would have been reported as that in the news? Yep. Hmm. They only give descriptions when it's convenient. Yep. So when, uh, when Johnny Crapbag in South Carolina, and we don't give Crapbag's notoriety here on Student of the Gun, we don't give them their 15 minutes of fame. You know that, right? You're like, well, what's that guy's name in South Carolina? I don't know, and I don't care. Well, I do know what it is, but I'm not going to give him any more notoriety. When Johnny Crapbag walks into a predominantly black church, what what does the story say? White man. White man, you know, shoots black. But here we've got a person of color, and I don't care, but the fact is I want to point out to you the hypocrisy of the news. I was, I was going to say I think that they should always report the description of the person because then you know what they look like. No, no. Well, you only need to know what they look like if they're a certain skin tone. If they're not, then we don't need to talk about that. And so that happened. And now you're like that. But you say to me, you're like, Paul, that's not possible. And I don't believe you. It's not possible for crime to occur in New York City because there are just so many laws. Is it I don't know in in New York City, is it illegal for uh, a man to take a machete and attack someone in a public park or, or do they need new laws? I you have. You tell me, folks. I don't know. You mean laws aren't the solution? Um, I just think we don't have enough of them. So I I'm, think we need more laws. I'm uh, looking at Glenn Tate just accepted my friend request on Facebook, and the first Aww, thing on his that's so special. The first thing on his uh, page, somebody posted on his page. It says less than five percent of New Yorkers registered their assault weapons, uh, mass civil disobedience. How do they know? How do they if know that? Don't, yeah, if you, I mean, less than 5% of the entire population of the state registered their assault weapons. I guess maybe that's what assault they mean. Assault weapons? Yeah. I, I don't. I, I didn't think you could buy those. I thought those were Class 3 items in New York. I thought you could only buy semi-automatic rifles that held less than 10 rounds. I'm going to read the story right now. You want me to read it to you? Uh, if you feel like it. Uh, it says, gun owners in New York have sent a clear message about New York Safe Act's assault weapons registry clause. We will not comply. When the first, uh, when the law first went into effect, there was an estimated 1 million rifles that would qualify as assault weapons under the law. How do they know? I, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's, that's what that's I'm another estimate, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the source for this place? This uh, ControversialTimes.com. I think we've used a couple mm. of their stories. But anyway, it says... Uh, gun owners immediately made it clear they would not comply with 
with what many man this site sucks it's, it's just not working it keeps going back and forth between stories oh then forget so it. what i'm going to do is i'm going to post this in the I'll post it in the show notes on studentthegunradio.com. You guys can come read it. You guys it can watch it, uh, look at it on your own computers, and then, well, then might, you can it, be frustrated I think yourself. it's just on the phone. Oh, okay. All right, keeping in, all right, uh, that was a New York story. And so, okay, you know, whatever, congratulations. But here's the fact. Here's the fact with New York. If you live in the state of New York, in the state, and you're a good person, you have a huge cancerous tumor that's attached to your state, and it's called New York City. And the fact of the matter is you and I both know that whoever wins New York City and perhaps Buffalo, whoever wins those two cities wins the governorship, right? Am I right or am I right? Okay. Um, Kumo shoved that unconstitutional, illegal piece of crap down your throats, and did he not get reelected? Mm, mm, yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. As long as you have that, that, that cancerous lump hanging out on the bottom of your state, you're never going to have freedom in New York State. So whatever you want to do about that, or maybe you don't want to do anything about that. Maybe you just want to stay there. Shocking footage of killer's violent rampage in North London suburb is released. Now, this fits in with our machete attack story. You guys remember we talked about the Muslim missionary uh, in England who uh, decided he was going to kill one of his neighbors. And uh, he was a convert, um, and he wanted other people to be a part of the religion of, of peace and brotherhood. And he was not, not very happy that, uh, that all of his neighbors weren't down with that. So he decided to go ahead and take a large knife and cut off a, a grandmother's head. Well, the reason that this is in the news is because they had helicopter footage. They had a, a, poli- a rescue services helicopter when they got the, uh, the call that this was going on. They had a rescue services helicopter. And uh, they've just gotten around to releasing the tape and the audio from that. Now, here's the crazy thing. You guys want to know what the crazy thing is? I was watching this, and we've got the, the link for you. You guys can watch it on your own. Then there's video or there's audio from the, the helicopter pilot, and he's trying to direct them to where this guy's going. And this guy is running around like a maniac with this, like, machete, large knife thing. And he's breaking, he's breaking through backyard fences, these, like, makeshift wooden fences and he's like there's children in the next yard you need to get over there and so finally you see all these police cars show up right and he's trying to direct them into the house where the guy went into and there's there's a whole bunch of them Jared. there's like a dozen cops standing there and they're all and then when they realize the dude's in there with this knife they all start backing up and create this big circle because guess what they've all got in their hands not guns batons Oh wow! And the and the uh, the helicopter pilot says, "It goes. It seems, it seems, we seem to have a, a number of unarmed officers down there." Because that makes sense. Because that makes a lot of sense. Because you're so, oh, you're so weak in England. It, how do you even get up? How do you go about your day with this the rampant weakness? And well, but yeah, we thought you guys would enjoy that. With the the, uh, the notes are in there. Uh, the link is in there. So if you want to talk, uh, take a look at that, you can do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put that up for you. Now, the following the following segment of Student of the Gun Radio is going to be brought to you by whom? Jared, go ahead and tell the folks at home, Johnny. Tell them who's supporting this show for them. Well, there's a bunch of people supporting you guys and supporting us to support you guys, uh, one of them being Crossbreed Holsters. If you haven't got one yet, you just need to go ahead and get one. It for the money, it's we, the most been, comfortable in the waistband holster and the highest quality in the waistband yeah. holster you're going to get. There's a bunch of what often in, imitated, never duplicated. That's yeah. their thing, yeah. and it's true because they make some good holsters. And I would say that if they, even if they didn't sponsor us, uh, Century Arms, they are the sponsors of the mobile app. If you don't have the mobile app yet, get that. You can get it on the Google Play Store or on iTunes. Uh, I think that there's a. You don't have to have. You can have a Windows phone and get it, but I have to send you the the link to download so if you yeah, have windows it, phone it's and you really want it, weird yeah it's if you want thing. it then you can send me an email and i'll give it to you does anyone besides zach have a windows phone uh there's someone poor up there. zach i feel so bad for him yeah and not you zach hall we know he, that he doesn't even he, he, he has even, something lower than yeah a windows he, phone. he's got like a 1998 nokia like, we will be seeing him tomorrow that's so, true zach yeah. if you can hear this 
Uh, if you don't have a new phone by tomorrow, we're definitely going to make fun of you. <laughs> uh, the, in addition to the mobile app, Century Arms also supports the radio show, obviously. They've been great supporters of us from the beginning, I yeah. believe. Well, yeah, I've known I've known the folks at Century for years and yeah. years and years and years. But uh, let's talk about AKs. If you guys have not been, you're like, oh, I already know. I know everything about Century. They have Wasser guns, and those are crap, and I would never buy one. And, and I I had a buddy uh, who bought a Wasser 10 years ago, and it, and it, he had problems with it, and, and blah, blah, blah. Like, dudes, 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 stop yourselves. Go to CenturyArms.com today. They have an, a redesigned website. And look at some of the new offerings. Look at some of the new stuff that they – they have a side folder – they have a side folder AK right now, a 100% made in the USA AK-47 with a side folding stock. They've got some really tricked out interesting stuff. If you haven't checked them out lately, you owe it to yourself to do that. And, uh, and Jared, tell them about the uh, the SWAT Fuel and the SWAT Fuel promo code. Well, one more thing before we move on to that. I want to make sure that you guys pay attention to the Facebook page and the Instagram page for Student of the Gun. Um, Atlas. Atlas. Yeah, Atlas. Sentry Arms and also Spikes Tactical. They're teaming up to make a, a new special build. Uh, and I've got some behind the scenes pictures for you guys up on Student on Facebook and oh, Instagram. Oh, yeah. So if you're not following us now, what about what if people hate Facebook? And they're like, I hate Facebook. I don't want to like Facebook. I'm never going to have a Facebook account. Screw them. Can they still social media or are they just out of luck? Yeah, they can still social media. How? Gundistrict.com. What? We're on there too. I got called out because. We've got a couple people that have that follow the student of the gun page on there, and they're like, "Well, you haven't accepted my friend request." That's because I don't really <laughs> use the personal page; I just use it for a student of the gun. <laughs> so, sorry about your luck. <laughs> Shame on you, man! If you, if you want me to accept your friend request, I use I communicate with people on Facebook. <laughs> now the the uh, the gun district page is actually uh, it's ramping up. We do appreciate you guys, everybody out there. Uh, who is following Gun District now, right now? Uh, they they notice. So what you guys are doing is a good thing. Uh, oh, one other one other online thing that we're we need to give them some uh, we need to give them a little bit of juice here, and that's full thirty dot com. Uh, full thirty dot com. It costs you nothing. It, essentially, it is a in a gun TV on the internet. Uh, Larry Vickers and Vickers Tactical is is the cornerstone of that network, and there's a bunch of other dudes, and we just jumped on with them about what, two weeks ago? Has it been two weeks? Three weeks? Uh, yeah, something it hasn't like been, that. It, I don't think it's been a month yet. We've got a couple of videos up there, and apparently our page is doing pretty good. Scott said, is it doing well? It's doing well. Yeah, yeah. it's also well. Doing it does good, good as it does well. So uh, if you want to check that out, it's it laptop, phone. They're mobile friendly, Jared. I'm assuming they are. Yeah, it's. 2015 but uh, go to full f-u-l-l 30 the number three zero dot com and there's all these different you know gun related channels that you can watch there and student of the gun is one of them cost you nothing all right what are we uh what are we going to move on and talk about next johnny oh we're going to talk about swap fuel swap fuel promo code you can go to swap dot com go to their store and you can save 10 percent using the promo code sotg 2015 so that's sotg 2015 go to swap dot com click on store and then use that promo code to save 10%. Ta-da! Ta-da! Uh, speaking of SWAT Fuel, we've been doing a lot of SWAT Fuel promotion, and uh, we do a lot of pictures from Fight You from the gym. We have a, On one side of the building here, we have the production studios, and then on the other side of the building, we have the gym. And uh, if, if you want to uh, check out all the stuff that we're doing. Zachary, is, Zachary, who you guys have probably never met. Now, if you're, cl- if you're paying attention to the TV is the uh, the Zachary pepper spray episode up on on Roku? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, we did a uh, we did a thing for all of you folks out there in the viewing audience. We discussed less than lethal force options because you can't always shoot. Not you can't ever you can't shoot every problem. How's that sound? Is that a good way to put it? Sometimes you're going to be accosted by, you're going to be annoyed by, you're going to be bothered by people that you have to deal with. The, the psycho lady who thinks you stole her parking spot, you know, uh, the person that thinks you thinks you cut them off in traffic. And so they follow you into a parking lot, into Walmart or the grocery store or whatever, and they jump out and they come running up to you and they're like losing their minds like crazy people. And unless they have a weapon in their hand or there's a lot of them or whatever, 
the chances are you're not going to be justified in capping that turkey. But you got to you have to deal with them. They won't be ignored. They refuse to be ignored. So you need to have something else, some type of a tool. And quite frankly, OC pepper spray is a fantastic tool for that mission. And uh, we did a special. We've done this a couple of times um, throughout the the history of Student of the Gun. But one of the most recent ones we did, uh, Zachary was our our thug. Zachary was the attacker. And little Alex sprayed Zachary with the pepper spray. And so you guys get to see exactly what happens when a human being uh, is introduced to our friend uh, OC, or our friend Mr. Pepper Spray. I believe there were two different ones. We did it with glasses on and with glasses off. Yeah, we did one with glasses and one without glasses. Now, if a person, people are like, well, yeah, man, so it's no good me carrying pepper spray because somebody might have glasses on. Well, you know what I would do? Just because I'm that kind of guy. I would slap them in the face and slap their glasses off and then spray them. But, but that's me. Uh, but if you've got a, a, a cone spray or, or, or a fogger. As long just, as you cover their face. It'll yeah, get just, there. just spray them and, and, and move away. Even if it doesn't get in their eyes immediately, it's still going to mess up their respiratory it, it, system. Yeah, it's, it's, going to, it's going to eventually affect them. And one of the things that we wanted to demonstrate with the pepper spray is that it's not like slapping somebody with a two by four. It's not you know, running them over the car or whatever. It's not like one second they're upright threatening you, and then one second later they're laying on the ground screaming. It doesn't work like that. It takes a couple seconds. It takes you. It's like it's kind of you do the like thousand one, thousand two, and it's cooking. So the reason I brought that up is because Zachary does a lot of work behind the scenes. Zach is our, he's kind of like our office manager guy. Um, He takes care of a lot of the grunt work around here. And he he does a lot of things behind the scenes that you guys don't ever see or or hear about. But he's he's been updating our social media. He updates the the Instagram. He updates the Facebook. Uh, He does a lot of stuff that you guys don't know about. But uh, he's been do- doing a really, uh, he's been doing a good job here lately, keeping the Instagram up to date. So, and he's also doing Gun District too, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's doing Gun District, all that stuff. So, uh, let me tell you what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is because um, my computer, my, you, you ever have your computer give you that little ice face, that little, it's like a little folder, it looks like it's frozen. And it says um, that it's not working right now. Mm. So what I just had to do is I just had to reinstall the show notes. So go ahead. Re- and tell- reinstall the show notes? Yeah, I had to reopen the show notes. Oh, I was like, I don't notes. know what that reinstall the show notes means. Oh. So are you, are you there yet? Because the next, the next story that we're going to talk about is Obama calling for gun control. And I know you're surprised. You're surprised that Obama wants to call for gun control. And hey, it, you're it, not supposed to say that I was name. I say it hurts me to say that name. No, you don't say that. We don't say that on here. We okay. don't say that. We say Comrade Barry or we say Barry Satero. Be respectful to his heritage. Okay. Don't disrespect his heritage. Okay, I, I won't. Okay. Don't res- disrespect his half-white, half-black heritage. So what we're saying here is we get accused. What are we saying right here? We get accused of being or using these tragedies to up our subscribership or blah, 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 blah. But when here we have Comrade Barry calling for gun control in wake of the sense, senseless South Carolina church murders. So it's been, what, two days, three days? Uh, it's been a couple of days. Well, it, we got uh, Comrade Barry's all over this, and uh, he's, he's been everywhere he goes now, this is the number one topic. Reasonable restrictions. It's too easy for people to get guns in America. We need to, it's time for common sense gun control. Derpa, derpa, derpa. Oh, check this out. Uh, there's an update to this story from Washington Times. It says, it says, police begin hate crime probe. Now, hang on a second. So a man of color attacks a a Korean woman with a machete in New York, and they say this was an unprovoked random attack. Wasn't that a hate crime? They weren't the same skin tone. I thought every time someone attacks someone else and they have a different skin color, it's de facto automatically a hate crime. Remember when uh, the Muslim missionary in Oklahoma chopped the lady's head off for not converting to the religion of peace and love? That wasn't a hate crime, apparently. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, America. Are you paying attention here, America? 
Are you paying attention? Uh, I don't know. You're probably. You guys are paying attention. Now, it's not just Comrade Barry. Uh, they, they, if you don't think that these folks have a playbook, if you don't think that they're organized, that they're all working from the same uh, scheme, from the same, uh, I guess you could say, uh, script, if you don't think they're working from the same script, I don't know what to tell you. So that was uh, Comrade Barry's doubling down on the guilt campaign. Jared, how do you convince an armed populace, how do you willingly or willfully disarm them? What do you do to enslave them? You, you screwed up and you allowed them to have guns at the beginning. You're like, hmm, we can't just come around and take them from them. There's three things that we can do to uh, convince them to be subservient and to surrender on their own without us having to take them from them. You, you distract them, which makes them ignorant. Mm. Or you, use, or you, you use, use ignorance. Guilt. Ignorance. Make sure that they d aren't familiar uh, with uh, history at all. You keep them dumb. Yep. You teach them about, like, gender equality as opposed to math, science, and English. Then you distract them with vapid garbage. You know, your Bruce Jenner garbage and, and that kind of filth. I don't know who that is. Yeah, exactly. Super tough. And, like and that. then... After that, if, you, if the ignorance and distraction don't work, well, then you guilt them into accepting what you want them to do. You, you start a never-ending guilt campaign. People that are in no way, shape, or form related or involved in a situation, you make them feel guilty. And so we've got that going on right now. Now, uh, we've got several other people uh, or that we want to mention here who are down with the, uh, the Comrade Barry thing. And we don't like to talk about it. Um, it, he, she, it, I'm not sure what it, are we, are we going to do a gender thing with this, uh, this creature that we're going to talk about now? I'm not sure where this person is. Um, but we have a special theme song for her or him or whatever. So uh, this story comes to us from Yahoo News. Uh, Yahoo, really? Uh, I don't know why I got this. It's, it's just one of many. But uh, Hillary, uh, Hillary Clinton, the continuing shame of the United States of America. If you ever, if you're ever thinking to yourself, does America have any conscience or any shame? As as a whole, as you know, as a whole, does the United States of America possess a collective conscience? And the answer um, would be no, uh, obviously no, because uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton uh, just got out um, on the stump. She got in front of a microphone. Uh, she slipped on some, some blood. It wasn't quite dry yet, uh, but she got in front of a microphone to call for common sense gun reforms. And, and in addition to that, uh, he, she, it wants a national reckoning with the persistence of institutional racism. So Hillary is all upset now. Now, this is a person, remember, who has 24-hour-a-day armed security that's paid for by you. If that doesn't make you want to throw up in your mouth a little bit, I don't know what does. So Hillary's out there um, stumping for gun control because it's time. It's, it's just time. It's time. Oh, okay. It's time. Um. We, we mentioned previously, because most of you that are under age 30 really don't remember the 90s, and you don't remember the, the, the stacks of bodies piled up around the Clintons uh, from Arkansas to D.C. to wherever they went. Are you going uh, to write that article? No, I'm not going to write oh, that article. On. It's not my job. Uh, but we found this. We mentioned it previously because I wanted you, you young kids, you uh, public school graduates, to remember or to, on your own, research and find out the scores of mysterious deaths and suicides and deaths under strange circumstances that surround the Clintons. Uh, I'm not making this crap up, folks. Do your research. Well, while we were prepping this, yet another former associate of the Clintons died mysteriously. And uh, the story comes to us from CNN.com. Uh, Jared, you got audio for this? I, th I, th I thought you had audio. Uh, oh, the CNN? Yeah, it's, it's only a minute. Yeah, there's a video. I can play it. You want me to play it right yeah, now? Yeah, please do. Okay, I will play it right now. Mexico, 
Officials say the 61-year-old's remains were found along a hiking trail in the mountains in the Taos area where he disappeared last week. Now, detectives have not yet determined a cause of death. All right, well, that's uh, all guess, they say. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. So here we go. The body of a former White House executive ship, Walter Shrive, was found Sunday in the mountains of New Mexico where he had gone hiking. Shrive served under President Clinton and then Bush following uh, has been absent since June 13th when he left to go on a hike in the mountains. He was later reported missing by his family. Uh, on Thursday, investigators tracked Shrive's cell phone signal to the mountains, according to the press release. Detectives are investigating the cause of death. Hmm. We've actually got some uh, audio from him from 2008. I don't know what he says, but I want to play it to see what he says. It says in 2008, uh, Shive spoke with CNN about his unique job. So, When you work at the White House, you check your ego and your politics at the door. It's never about you. It's about how you can be of service to the first family, of service to the first lady, make their dreams and their wishes come true on the plate in the style of the entertaining. And if that also helps you, fine. But if it's, uh, again, as I say, it's not about you. It's about the first family. Making sure you do what they're looking for. It's a big goal. Okay. Uh, He's like, please don't kill me. Yeah, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Now, you're like, all right, Paul, you're stretching. You're reaching. This is just... This is just a coincidence. This is an isolated incident. You can't say that this guy is directly related to Killary. Oh, crap. Except in the story, it says Shribe was served as a White House executive chef from 94 to 2005. Shribe was personally hired by then First Lady Killary Clinton. Oh, crap. Here's the deal. Um, if you're listening to me, don't take a job with these people. I know it's I know it's seductive. I know you might think, well, but I want to. Mm. The chances of you dying mysteriously, going to federal prison, or deciding to kill yourself by shooting yourself in the back of the head twice, um, that happens to Clinton Associates. But it's okay because we're going to rule that death by natural causes. Don't do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. Oh, finally, who else is on the... We've got a, a nut bar who... Uh, if you ever wonder, how do you write such thrilling novels, or how did you do that 20 years ago? Uh, everything he writes today is crap. Uh, but that's okay. Um, Stephen King calls for more gun control in the response to the church shooting. Um, too many closed minds on the Second Amendment, says King. According to Bloomberg Business, gun deaths will exceed traffic fatalities in America this year. Can't put a seatbelt on a semi-automatic weapon. Oh, according to Bloomberg Business, um, gun deaths? All right. Let's go ahead and let's put a pin in that. Hey, Bloomberg, number one, I don't believe a word of your propaganda. But number two, let's just say it's kind of like the gun death clock. The the deaths by guns clock. What what do they lump into there, Jared? Do they include like justifiable mur- homicides? Ah, uh, justifiable homicides, suicides, uh, police using. Oh, well, if they're local police, they shouldn't be shooting anybody. Only Big Brother can shoot people with guns in America today. Hey, hey, Steve, Steve, here's what you need to do. You need to shut up because you're making yourself look even more stupid than normal. Uh, so what your your answer is there, Steve, is to create more good victims. Steve, I want you to write me a book and tell me about how disarming the citizenry, disarming good people. I want you to write me a book and tell me how disarming good people protects the innocent. Go ahead. That's your assignment. Oh, he even said a 30-shot clip. Oh, here we go. The Confederate flag was flying over state capitol. It's disgusting. But it's a sidetrack. The real problem comes with a 30-shot clip. Uh, apparently, the firearm that was used in the church killing was a 45 caliber Glock pistol. And I'm pretty sure it didn't have a 30-shot clip, um, Mr. King. Mr. King, you need to stick with what you used to know which was writing novels, uh, and your your old work uh, was was really good. Can we dedicate the grad program this week to the history of the Confederate flag? Um, eh, no, that's not a whole program. 
Or but, can you can you touch he, on it? Yeah, I can touch on it. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. This is what uh, I'm going to tell you about the Confederate flag thing. It's like, oh, so the, the murder in South Carolina, he favored the Confederate flag. Okay. Um, should we go to his, uh, his house and figure out what books he owned, and we're going to ban all of those books, too? Maybe we should go through his browser history, and we should find any of the sites that he went to, and we should make all those Internet sites illegal, because obviously they lead to hate. Uh, maybe we should find out what kind of mobile phone he used and make those mobile phones illegal. Someone explain to me how attacking or removing a historical symbol stops murderers from murdering. Can we make it illegal for... Um, Muslim missionaries to fly their black flags with the, all the the white scribbly stuff on them? Can we make that illegal? Uh, so do you want to live in a country full of mob rule? where we can get, If we can get enough morons ginned up, then we can just change the world? Folks, yeesh. that That would be why. You, you better get your crap together. That would be why we are a republic. Yeah, not a we're democracy. a represented republic. We're not a democracy. This is not mob rule. I don't know what to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm all done. I'm done listening. I'm done talking about this stupid stuff. I need to do something that's not stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope that you're studying, that you're researching, that you're reading the political thought of the American Revolution, the Federalist Papers, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, dynamic freedoms. You need to have this information locked tight in your brain so you can make good decisions and fight against ignorance and stupidity when it raises its ugly head. Oh, and don't go to work for the Clintons. Oh, Other than that... Yeah, one more thing. One go more to, thing. Go to studentofthegun.com, and I'm going to be sending out today's Thursday... Uh, I'm planning on sending out the first video in the series of the uh, faith, talking about faith, faith and, and patriotism. Patriot. Yeah, the first video in that series is going to be going out today. So go to studentofthegun.com and watch that video. It's a minute long, and at the end of the minute, there's a little button that pops up where you can give us your information, and we can send you updates. When this you, you want their name, social security number, PIN number? Nope, just name and email. Oh, your name and email? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. That's pretty secret. Folks, you don't want to miss this message. It's important. I've been working on it for a while. I don't know what else to tell you. This is it for this week. Uh, if you're a grad program member, congratulations. You rock on, and uh, you're, part of the, you're part of the family, and we're going to talk to you tomorrow on Friday. Other than that, the rest of you folks, we will see you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye.